everybody, it's Marika Lake here. I live on the west coast of Australia with my hubby Greg and we homeschool our four kiddos. I have Will who's in grade eight, Em is in grade four, Cruz is in grade two and little Jackson is in pre-primary. And here in the Lake House Homeschool, we have been homeschooling for four years now. I have another video for you today in the Homeschool 101 series and we're gonna talk about assessment ideas. Now I have done some videos in this series talking about how to show uh, progress to your moderator and I've done a video on looking at the portfolios that I make up here in the Lake House Homeschool. So if you would like to check out those videos, I'll fly a card up the top of the video for you and pop links in the description box down below. Uh, but today I just wanted to actually just share with you some different assessment ideas uh, that we use here in our house for the different subject uh, different subject areas. Now here in the Lake House Homeschool, I am not a person that actually does formal assessments at all. I am assessing my children as we go throughout the year to make sure that they are learning and progressing, but I actually don't give them like formal written tests or anything like that. I just kind of do it in a way that they really don't know that they're kind of being assessed or tested or that I'm seeing if they've progressed. It's kind of just a natural thing that's happening for them so that there's no pressure um, for them to perform. I hate tests, I hate nap plan, I don't do that, but I still do need to assess if my children are learning and progressing. So these are some of the ways that I do that. And first we'll talk about what I do in the area of language and literacy. Now I do have my trusty notebook here that I'm reading notes from if you see me looking down. Okay, so here are some of the things I do to assess whether my children are learning in language and literacy. So I use online programs. Um, and so with my online programs, I often have quizzes and things built into the program and they can't move forward in the program without achieving the goal. So that's an excellent way to know that they're achieving just to see how they're actually progressing through the program. We use our uh, reading eggs um, and I know that you can't move on in the little section until you've actually completed it. And if you don't complete it with enough to pass, you'll have to do that bit again. So I'm not giving them any a formal assessment, but the program kind of is the assessment because they can't move on unless they've kind of mastered that thing. So online programs are excellent. Um, another thing that I do with reading to assess how they are going is just to make notes as I am going along. So I'll just have my child read aloud to me and as and that's just something that we do all the time. It's not like, hey, come and read to me. I'm going to assess how your reading's going. They actually, the younger children actually read aloud to me all the time. And as they're reading aloud, I will just make some observations. I might not write it down in the moment, but just uh, observe it while they're reading and then when I'm done I will write it down and so I'll just start to notice things like oh they're reading more fluently now I can see that they're not having to sound words out that they can say them read them straight away I can notice that they're starting to read more difficult words and I will just write those observations down and put a date on them so there's no formal me not saying to the child sit down I'm going to give you a reading assessment it's not how I do it. Um, we just read aloud um, every school day and I will just know how they're going each time that they read to me. And something that I do do regularly is get my children to write and collect those um, work samples as we are going. So whatever it is they're writing, if they're writing a short story or they're writing a recipe or whatever it is, um, I will definitely help them through the progress and we get to editing and then together we'll edit the writing piece, looking for spelling mistakes, grammar, capitalizations, all that kind of things. Um, and we'll work together on editing that and then they'll go away and write their final piece out. And so I'm not saying, again, not saying to them, this is a test or anything. We just work on it together. Um, and so we might do, say we're writing a short story. We might do all of the process together of working on the short story and I help them every step of the way. And then when they finish that one short story, I'll say, hey, would you like to write another one? Um, and get them to kind of do it, the whole process on their own. Um, and then um, that's a way of um, assessing how their writing is going. 
So for maths, I do a couple of different things. I use two math programs and one of those programs is actually an online program. I use mathsonline.com.au and within the program, they actually have revision sections that the children can complete. And so after they've done a section of work, they can then do the revision section and I can have a look at how they are going. And the program also records their pass grade um, and so has the percentages uh, that they are passing um, the particular maths concept, concept that they did and so sometimes what I do is I'll go into the results and I'll have a look at that pass rate and if I see they've got like a really low percentage um, then I'll know that they need some extra work in that area so just jump back and make them redo that area or look for some more uh, ways to help them in that area. And the other thing that I do, the other program I use is actually the maths program from The Good and the Beautiful. I love that program for my younger children and they have unit assessments within that program as well. So I think the maths books for the levels are broken into like four sections within the book. And when they get the, to the end of one section, it'll just have a unit review for them to complete. Um, and so I will use that as well to have a look at um, how to assess how my children are learning um, in that math area. Now for history, geography and science, I kind of do all of the same things. I do a couple of different things. Uh, so one thing I will do is recitations. So after we have learnt about a topic, I will just get the children to recite or tell back to me the things that they remembered or learnt about that subject. And so what I could do is when they're talking is I could make notes about the things that they said um, or I could actually record um, what it is that they say. So I have that recording um, or I can just take it in and, and say, oh yeah, no, they did, um, they did learn that um, or no, they totally <laughs> missed the mark on that and we might need to do some more or next time when they're a bit older, they might grasp that concept a bit better. Um, so recitation is definitely a great way for my kids anyway, because my kids don't overly enjoy writing. And so often I'll just get them to tell me uh, what it is they've learned. I know for my older son, he's really great at telling me the things that he has learned and the things that he loved learning about. Um, and so it's much easier to gain an understanding of, of what he has learned by them recitation citing back to me. Another thing that you could do at the end of say a science or history or a geography kind of um, a set of lessons, not after every lesson, but you could, could get them to write about what it is that they learnt about or pick one thing um, that they learnt about um, and write about that. Or you could like do a project at the end, uh, say you've done a, a, a term on science and you were looking at marine animals. You could get them to pick one, so they might pick the whale and they might do a little research project on the whale or write everything that they know about the whale, get them to draw pictures, find pictures online, uh, that kind of stuff. So kind of put together a little presentation or a little project um, on one of the things that they've been learning about that term. Now, if you actually wanted to have proper formal written tests written up and things like that, there's definitely plenty of places that you can find those things. You can always check out Teachers Pay Teachers for different things. Um, usually though within the curriculum that you are using, they will have um, some assessment ideas or some assessment pages for you to fill out and just get your kids to do that and then put them aside into their portfolio. And that's a great way um, to show your moderator the things that they've been learning um, and kind of collect, collect all of those unit assessments that you um, have been doing over the year kind of keep them in one place um, and then you can show your moderator so they're just a few assessment ideas that I use um, here in our homeschool they are really simple and easy to do um, and for me I think just making observations of my children's learning is definitely how I assess my children and then I just write those observations down so that when it comes to the end of the school year and I'm kind of writing up the information information for my moderator. I have everything written down that I've noted, you know, that my children, I note their weaknesses, I note their strengths um, with their weaknesses. I write down, you know, 
uh, things that I'm going to do now to help them in those weaknesses and I implement them as I go. And so really that just observations is just a really good way to assess how your children are going um, over the year. And then you'll just have a collection of observations to show your moderator and use to write out a little report at the end of the year. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope that you found all of that information helpful. If you have any questions at all, just leave a comment in the comments box down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this Homeschool 101 playlist. I will leave a link to that playlist in the description box down below for you. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.